Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. How are you? I hope everyone is in good health. It is awesome to be with you today. Let me introduce myself. I am Farid bin Abdul Rahim from SMK Taman Ehsan Kepung. Today, we are going to learn about the classification of elements, compounds, mixtures and the periodic table. Previously, you have already learned about matter. Now, we will differentiate between atoms and molecules and learn how to separate compounds and mixtures into their elements. Before we get started, let's take a look at the learning objectives for our lesson today. There are five objectives. First, you will be able to differentiate between atoms and molecules as well as elements and compounds. Second, you will be able to identify the position of metals, non-metals, and inert gases in the periodic table. Third, you will be able to identify mixtures and solve problems of separating mixtures through physical methods. Fourth, you will be able to identify compounds and demonstrate the formation of compounds between metal and non-metal. And lastly, you will be able to separate compounds through chemical methods. Boys and girls, let's take a look at this picture. Can you tell me what it is? Yes, good. It is a periodic table. What can you see from the blocks inside the periodic table? Yes, that's right. We can see a lot of elements that have been arranged in an orderly and in a systematic manner. Can you spot water in the periodic table? Hmm. I can only see sodium, helium, and aluminum. But these are just elements. We cannot spot water because water is a compound and not an element. Now, this is related to the topic that we are going to learn today. As we know, everything around us, whether it is gas, liquid, or solid, is made up of matter. When matter is observed closely, it is made up of tiny particles called atoms. How about molecules? Atoms combine to form molecules that make up different kinds of substances around us. This slide shows an example of molecules. As you can see, atoms combine with each other to form molecules of hydrogen oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, nitrogen oxide, water, nitrogen dioxide, and water. Let's look closely at the structure of an atom. An atom consists of three subatomic particles, which are proton, neutron, and electrons. The size of an atom is too small and can only be seen using an electron microscope by enlarging the atom to a million times. As you can see, atom consists of three subatomic particles which are protons, neutrons, and electrons. Proton and neutrons are inside the nucleus of an atom, while the electrons circle around the nucleus. The nucleus has an overall positive charge due to the positively charged protons in it. The number of electrons in an atom is equal to the number of protons. Thus, an atom is neutral. These are examples of the structure of an atom for six elements. How about molecules? Molecules are neutral particles made up of two or more atoms. From the screen, you can see a few examples of molecules.
Can you name the molecules? Wow, excellent answer. Very good. Now, we are going to learn about elements. An element is the simplest form of substance. It cannot be divided into two or more simpler substances. There is only one type of atom in an element. Iron, aluminium, oxygen, sulfur and hydrogen are examples of elements. For your information, oxygen is the most abundant element that exists on Earth. How about compound? A compound consists of two or more elements that are mixed chemically. This newly formed product has its own characteristics. There are a lot of compounds that we use every day, such as salt, sugar, carbon dioxide, and water. Water and carbon dioxide in the fire extinguisher are also examples of compounds that we use every day. Let's look at this picture. All the elements are arranged according to their shared physical and chemical properties. The elements can be classified into the major categories of metals, semi-metals, and non-metals. Elements also are arranged in the increasing order of atomic numbers. Elements in the modern periodic table are arranged in 7 periods and 18 groups. Horizontal rows are called periods and vertical columns are called groups. This is the area in the periodic table that shows the metal element. As you can see, copper is a metal. Most metals have shiny appearance and are ductile, malleable, with high tensile strength. They are also good electric and heat conductors. Now, look at the area of non-metals in the periodic table. Carbon is an example of non-metal. Most non-metals are dull in appearance, are brittle and non-malleable with low tensile strength or break easily. They are also poor electric and heat conductors. These are more examples of metal. Whereas, these are examples of non-metals. Do you know what a mixture is? A mixture consists of two or more elements or compounds mixed physically. Let's uh, see some examples of mixture from the figure. Burger and nuts are mixtures. Some drinks like cocktail and ai batu champo are made from a combination of solid and liquid. Can you list a few more examples of mixtures that you always use? How can a mixture be separated? As the mixture is formed physically, it can be separated physically too. For example, a sandwich is made of bread, vegetables, and meat. Therefore, we can separate the ingredients easily through a physical method. This picture shows other examples of mixtures in daily life. There are six methods to separate mixtures into its element. Now, let us learn all the methods on how to separate mixtures. The methods are filtration, distillation, chromatography, flotation, sedimentation, and the use of magnets. 
first, let us learn about filtration. Filtration is a method used to separate an insoluble solid from a mixture of solid and liquid. For example, we can separate coffee powder from coffee solution. The second method is distillation. What is distillation? Distillation is the method used to separate a liquid mixture that has different boiling points. How does distillation work? The process of distillation begins with heating a liquid to boiling point. The liquid evaporates forming a vapor. The vapor is then cooled, usually by passing it through pipes or tubes at a lower temperature. The cooled vapor then condenses, forming a distillate. The third method of separating a mixture is by using a magnet. If you hold a magnet close to a box of iron nails mixed with sand, what would happen? Iron nails are metals and magnetic substances. Hence, they will be attracted to the magnet. But sand is not a magnetic substance. Therefore, it will remain inside the box. Magnetic attraction can be used to separate two solid mixtures in which one of the substances is magnetic and the other is not. Now, let's continue with the fourth method, which is the sedimentation method. What can you observe when sand is poured into the beaker filled with water? Look at the figure. Two layers are formed in which the water is at the upper layer and the sand is deposited at the base of the beaker. This is because the sand is not soluble in water and has a higher density. Therefore, the sedimentation method is used to separate a liquid and insoluble solid in a mixture. The fifth method is the flotation method. This method can be used to separate soluble and insoluble materials in water. For example, oil has a lower density than water. Therefore, oil will float on the water surface. A separating funnel can be used to separate the oil and water. And the last method to separate mixture is by chromatography. Chromatography is a physical method of separation that distributes the components into separate phases, one stationary and the other moving in a definite direction. Now, boys and girls, let's move on to the next part of our lesson. What is a compound? A compound consists of two or more elements combined chemically. This new product has its own characteristics. A compound is produced from a chemical reaction. Compounds can be produced in the laboratory or in the natural environment. For example, sugar is made up of hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. Other examples of compounds are shells. A shell is made up of a combination of calcium, carbon, and oxygen. While water is made up of hydrogen and oxygen. Let's move on to the next part of our lesson today. How do metal and non-metal elements combine chemically to form a compound? For your information, metal reacts easily with non-metal to form compounds. For example, 
metal reacts with oxygen to form metal oxides. These are other examples of metal oxides. Look at the first example. When magnesium reacts with oxygen, it will form magnesium oxide. There are also some metals that react with water to form alkali compounds and release hydrogen gas. These elements are known as alkali metals. Examples of alkali metals are lithium, sodium, and potassium. For example, when lithium reacts with water, it will produce lithium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. And the last reaction is between metal and sulfur. For example, iron reacts with sulfur powder to form iron sulfide when heated. As a conclusion, when metal reacts with oxygen, it will form metal oxide. Metal reacts with water to form metal hydroxide and hydrogen gas. And the last reaction between metal and non-metal in today's lesson shows that when metal reacts with sulfur, it will produce metal sulfide. When a compound is produced, can we separate compounds using physical methods? The answer is no. You're right. Boys and girls, you must use chemical methods to separate compounds. Compounds cannot be separated physically, like mixtures, because the elements in a compound are bonded chemically. Therefore, a compound can only be separated chemically by electrolysis. What is electrolysis? Electrolysis is a chemical decomposition of a compound into its element by passing an electric current through the compound. Now, let's learn more about electrolysis. Water is a compound. Water consists of hydrogen and oxygen. Therefore, to separate the hydrogen and oxygen from water, the water must undergo the electrolysis process. This process produces hydrogen gas at the negative electrode, which is known as cathode, and oxygen gas at the positive electrode, known as anode. It looks like we have come to the end of our lesson today. Let's try to recall what we have learned today. Are you ready? First question. What are the elements in carbon dioxide? Excellent! You're correct! The elements in carbon dioxide are oxygen and carbon. Next question. What are the elements in water? Very good! The answer is two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Let's move to the next question. How can the components of a compound be separated? Very good! The components of a compound can be separated through electrolysis. Next question. State the type of element for P and R as shown in the periodic table. Look at P first. 
What do you think? You're correct. It is a metal element. How about this one? Can you identify what R is? Excellent. R is a non-metal element. Let's recall what we have learned today. First, we learn how to differentiate between atoms, molecules, elements, and compounds. Then, we learn how to identify the position of metal, non-metal, and inert gases in the periodic table. Next, we learn to identify mixtures and solve problems of separating mixtures through physical methods. We also learn how to identify compounds and the formation of compounds between metal and non-metal. And lastly, we learn how to separate compounds through chemical methods. We have come to the end of our lesson for today. I hope you will use the knowledge gained today in your daily life, especially the knowledge to separate mixtures. I hope you enjoy today's lesson. Until we meet again, stay safe everyone. Bye-bye.